Now leave it to me to be that guy. And I, I really, believe it or not, don't like to be that guy. Actually, you shouldn't believe it because I thrive on it. I live for it. I relish it. And again, it fits with the show's motto of not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need, which means sometimes I come on here and say things that are going to be inherently unpopular because it's something you need to hear, not necessarily what you want to hear. And what you don't want to hear, but you really need to hear, is this whole notion of Asuka being stripped of the NXT title is hot garbage. Complete and total flaming hot garbage. Maybe not Baron Corbin dumpster fire type of hot garbage, but close enough. This is all ridiculous to me on so many different levels. First and foremost, WWE, Triple H, the powers that be within NXT, the company as a whole, all those officials had to know that they're getting ready to bring Asuka up to the main roster soon. Because you didn't bring her in just to be dominant on NXT. That's not the end game. As much as some of the hardcore fans might feel like it's the end game. And for frankly some of the talent once they leave NXT. Unfortunately it kind of is the end game. NXT is a launching pad to the main roster. Never forget it. It is the WWE's own internal independent promotion. But it is not the be all end all. They don't call it NXT weekend, it's WrestleMania weekend, it's SummerSlam weekend. The whole point is, if you're bringing in people, you're bringing them in with one goal, and that is to eventually get them to the main roster, whether that be Raw or SmackDown, period. Period. So you have to know that all good things must come to an end. You have to know that she wasn't going to be on NXT forever any damn ways. And you have to know that you're getting to that point in time where the time has come for her to leave NXT and transition to the main roster. So it seems so fitting and so appropriate, the moment was at hand at NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 3, to have her drop the strap to Ember Moon. For Christ's sakes, Asuka held the belt for over 500 flippin' days, setting all types of records for longest championship reigns, Longest women's title reign of any kind in WWE. All of this stuff. You did not need to protect her. The whole notion of having her win just to then strip the title and creating an injury angle out of this as an excuse to strip the title off of her is complete and total hot garbage. You had the bitch carry the strap for almost a year and a half. If you have gotten to the point where you feel like in any way, shape, or form, in my opinion, you need to protect her, then we need to reevaluate priorities or reevaluate just how good the talent actually is. There was story there with Ember Moon. Previous matches, now Ember Moon is back. The platform is significant. Here is a perfect opportunity to have Ember Moon ascend to that top spot and become the new head bitch in charge of the NXT women's division. But instead, it almost felt like a political game was playing out as Asuka, in spite of any and all logic and reasoning to me, retained her strap. This is completely and totally ridiculous because if you're looking at it from a future standpoint, not only does it look kind of dumb to have Ember Moon win the strap, let's say, even if you did that, and there's no guarantee that they would now that Asuka's been stripped, it would have meant a whole lot more if Ember Moon was the one to beat the unbeatable Asuka, and now you've got the rest of the women's roster on NXT trying to beat Ember Moon, so what does that mean for them when they're the one that eventually beats Ember Moon? You don't have that from an NXT standpoint because she could never beat Asuka. That's dumb. That's not the way business should be done. The whole thing of when you're leaving the territory, to borrow a term from Vince, the time-honored tradition, you put somebody over on your way out, and that's exactly what the hell should have happened here. Whether you believe in the injury, which I don't, I think it's a complete load of shit, or whether you don't. The simple fact of the matter is, SummerSlam weekend, NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 3, was the perfect time to finally get that strap off of Asuka, put it on Ember Moon and cement her as your new top woman in NXT. And then eventually someday she puts somebody over, which really helps elevate them. And then Asuka goes to the main roster. And frankly, when she gets to the main roster, all you're going to hear about is how she was the longest reigning women's champion in NXT history. She's the longest reigning champion in WWE history. All this other shit. Nobody's going to be talking about the fact that she beat 
everybody, but ultimately Ember Moon beat her at TakeOver Brooklyn 3. Who gives a shit? Again, if you feel like you have to protect the person that held the belt for over 500 days, then you're being ridiculous. And what does that really mean about the talent that you push to the freaking moon and force down everybody's throats? Furthermore, someday when an Ember Moon comes to the main roster, to me, my opinion, the whole story here is so much more intriguing. If she's the one person when Asuka's on her own dominant run on Raw or SmackDown, which you are surely going to get out of her, for an Ember Moon to come in and say, we have unfinished business, yes, but I'm also, if you remember, the only woman that beats you in NXT. I did it before and I'll do it again. Now she comes here and you're going to try and tell the story that Ember Moon has unfinished business because she was never able to beat her. Well, frankly, you can envision the way they're going to book Asuka on Raw or SmackDown if they do a similar type of thing. Nobody else is going to beat her either. So instead of an Ember Moon coming up to the main roster and instantly standing out when you talk about it because she's the one woman in the company at any level to have actually beaten Asuka, she's just going to be basically another face in the crowd. So this whole notion, and this is not just second guessing about a collarbone injury or this and that. The fact is, regardless of anything, the timing was right for Asuka to drop the strap at NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 3, and they didn't do it, and it's dumb. And what's really dumb to me, my opinion, my opinion, is I don't buy this whole collarbone injury crap. I don't. I think it's just a lame worked injury angle as an excuse to get the strap off of her. And even with that being said, if you talk about with a broken collarbone, having a six to eight week recovery, you need to wear a sling and all this other stuff. The whole thing is, is I don't get the notion of why Asuka couldn't have remained the champion until your next takeover show in November on Survivor Series weekend, because you allow somebody like Lesnar to go months without defending the strap why are we all of a sudden caring about continuity in WWE? What makes that situation so much different than this one? And really does it matter if she doesn't defend it in a four-week period if it waits six to eight weeks for her to defend it? The answer is absolutely not. So if you're going to keep her there in NXT or you thought maybe Ember Moon wasn't the right person or it wasn't the right time, then you still should have ultimately had somebody beat her on Asuka's way out. That is fucking full retarded. Full retarded. Full retarded. You never go full retard. You go half retard in wrestling, you could draw some money. You go full retard, you're just stupid. As some of you say about me sometimes. But again, I don't buy the broken collarbone. To me, it just seems like a work, a reason to get the strap off of her. Get her off TV for a little while for NXT or get her off the network. Uh, figure out when you're going to shoehorn her into the main roster, which may potentially not come all the way until the Royal Rumble, especially if you're talking about having a women's Royal Rumble match, or maybe it is around Survivor Series time. Well, in that case, either way, you still could have had Asuka, if anything else, held the title for a couple more months, and then again, put somebody over on her way out. To me, there is no point in building up a streak in her particular case Especially if you ended the Undertaker streak at WrestleMania. To me, if you were ever going to talk about an unassailable streak, it was Taker streak at WrestleMania. But you ultimately, when all things were said and done, had two people, Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns, beat him at WrestleMania. The point is, if Undertaker can lose at WrestleMania, then this bitch Asuka could have lost at one of these NXT TakeOver shows. And the fact that she didn't was complete and utter bullshit. Now you leave the NXT women's roster to me without a clearly established top person because, again, the only reason any of them are going to have the championship is because Asuka's gone and nobody could fucking beat her. And to me, that's not good business. It's just not realistic at this point in time. Everybody can lose on a given day. You see great teams in sports still find a way to lose at some point in time. It could be a fluke. It could be a one-off thing and then go right back to being dominant. And that's exactly what could have happened with Asuka. You have her lose at NXT TakeOver Brooklyn 3. Put over Ember Moon. Ember Moon is your new face of the NXT women's division. Asuka goes into hiding for a little bit. Then you figure out the perfect point in time to bring her in. And then you make her dominant on Raw or SmackDown, whatever the hell you're going to do. But I'm not buying the injury. I think it's complete and total crap. I think it's a complete work and a poor excuse to get the title off her because they don't want her to put anybody over on the way out. And again, I emphasize... You had this heifer held the title for over 500 days. 
The whole notion of protecting her is completely and totally ridiculous. And if you need to protect somebody that you pounded down everybody's throats for almost a year and a half as the alpha female of NXT, then maybe you hitched your wagon to the wrong horse. Maybe she's not as good as you pretend her to be and the fans pretend her to be. Just what a complete total bunch of crap. Complete crap. And if you don't like it, that's tough. If you didn't want to hear this from me, you clicked on the video, so that's what you deserve. Again, that's why OTR Essential is not the wrestling show you want, just the wrestling show you need. Because every once in a while, you need some truth bombs like I just dropped right here. Asuka being stripped of the title was hot garbage. And in my opinion, not the best way to do business on so many different levels.